It might be that you are looking at upgrading your camera, or maybe you're new at this and are ready to fund your video ventures. The rage has been DSLR cameras for quite some time, so before I offer an alternative, here's what you're looking at. First, you get a camera, and a decent camera is going to cost you about 500 to 1,000 bucks new, possibly more than that if you want 4K, which you probably do like everyone else. Not saying you need it, just saying most people want it. Next, you're going to want a decent lens. You can certainly get your camera with a kit lens for a little more, but you're going to be disappointed and wonder why your video looks so less appealing than others. Kit lenses, for the most part, suck. So you want a good lens, and a good zoom lens is going to cost you around $1,000 more or less. So let's say you're up to about 2,000 bucks. Maybe you decide the zoom lens is too expensive, and you're going to get some prime, fixed, non-zooming lenses. That's cool, but now you're going to need different ranges, like a 28 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, or an 85 millimeter to cover the range. These are cheaper, but again, you don't want to crap lenses, or you're going to be disappointed, so you'll spend maybe another thousand dollars for these primes, more or less. Still at two thousand bucks. Now, these cameras have some of the worst audio electronics ever. That's a four thousand dollar camera, as they were designed to be photography cameras, not video cameras. And the mics on these cameras are stupid small and crappy, and not usable for dialogue of any kind. If you don't care about ever recording dialogue, that's fine. Trust me, you will. So you need a decent microphone. You've already spent almost $2,000 on a camera and lens, so now you're going to cheap out on a microphone? The amount of frustration you'll deal with on cheap mics, and the number of mics you'll buy over time, just buy a good one like this one. It's about 200 bucks. And I wouldn't go any cheaper than that, otherwise it will break or sound bad. Okay, let's say we're at 2200 bucks. Next, you're going to stick this mic on top of the camera. Everyone does it. And now you'll be dicking around with the camera's internal crappy electronics, wondering why you spent good money on a mic. Save yourself a ton of headaches and get a good audio recorder. You've already gone in for some real coin on this camera setup. So now you can shoot off some video, so pony up for a good recorder. You can get something like the Zoom H1, but it's plastic, it will break, and eventually you'll be disappointed. Recorders can be expensive, into the thousands, but I suggest at the very least get something like the Zoom H4n Pro or something equivalent. But be warned, you'll also get pissed because it takes forever to start up, forever to format a card, and if you're okay with that, great. You won't be. Otherwise, drop another hundred bucks and get the Zoom H6 or something, some equivalent, and you'll be happy for years to come. That's what I'm using now. Now you're up to about 2,600 bucks, I think. Eventually, you'll figure out mounting the mic on top of the camera is not good for dialogue. Realize you need the mic to be close to the talent. So throw in a boom pole or something to hold the mic, maybe 50 to 100 bucks. We had 2,700 bucks? Next, you'll need some recording media, so throw in some recorder media, uh, SD cards or CF cards if that's what the camera uses. And make sure you get big ones that are fast or you'll get pissed when they fail. Batteries. Buy at least a couple of extra batteries, otherwise you're screwed. After about an hour or less, you'll be pissed again at having to deal with recharging batteries. Another two batteries. Maybe 50 bucks, so we're at 27.50. Better yet, get a battery grip, which is basically an attachment to your camera that allows you to use two batteries and hook up an AC adapter to plug it in the wall. You might as well buy on about 100 to 200 bucks as camera having to be dismounted every time. That's because you got it mounted on a tripod and you're gonna have to unmount it every time. You can't get to the batteries on most of these, so you'd have to unmount this thing and that just blows. Now when I replace the batteries, I just pull the cartridge out and put the two batteries in and I'm good to go. Another 150 bucks for the grip. Uh, are we at 2,900 bucks? Okay, we've got our camera cards and sound all worked out and we spent almost three grand on everything. Maybe more. Maybe you got a huge deal and got away with 
2500 bucks for all this. Hopefully you didn't cheap out on everything as you're in for a really crappy time. Last thing to note, depending on the camera, you're going to have to deal with recording time limits that are built into the camera. Some of those have come off, but most are still there, which means your recording will stop after 6 to 12 minutes or your files will be split into 6 to 12 minute segments. Oh, and if you shoot outside the sun, you're going to need some ND filters or your footage will be all overexposed. Add in another 100 bucks for a cheap one. Sure, you can dump two, three, four thousand dollars in a brand new Sony camera that shoots 4K in low light. You're still gonna need all that crap that I talked about. Let's leave it there, and you can see you're gonna spend on the low end maybe two thousand bucks. And as you get better stuff, it's gonna cost you three thousand dollars or more. All cool so far? It's not that bad. I use that type of setup all the time. I just want you to know what you're in for, and once you master these things, they are great, and you work around all these shortcomings. Now, here's a surprise, and I'll disabuse a lot of false information. Ever thought about instead an actual video machine? It's known as a camcorder. Probably not, as all your friends will tell you that you need a DSLR or some kind of camera with interchangeable lenses and blah, blah, blah. Why? That's because that's what they used and all their friends told them to get. See, I don't care if you use Mac or Windows, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, a Rode mic, a D mic, I don't care. DSLR, mirrorless, Sony, Canon, Blackmagic, Panasonic, Olympus, and so on, I don't care. But if you're gonna drop some coin on a new camera, you'd be foolish not to do your research, and part of that research would be looking at the current state of camcorders because they've come a really long way. Here's a brand new Sony camcorder, and no, Sony didn't give it to me. It costs real cash. What do you need to buy extra? Nothing. Let's take a look at it. First thing everyone will tell you is you can't get any depth of field. That's that blurry background as camcorders can't control the aperture setting and their lenses suck. False. Here's the aperture setting right here known as an iris on a camcorder. Next, you can't control the ISO. False. It's right here. They call it gain on a camcorder, and to make it simple, they've also labeled it ISO and let you change between the two types of nomenclature. Next is camcorders can't control the shutter speed, also false, as that's right here. The lenses suck, false, as this comes with a Zeiss lens, which goes from 9.3 millimeters to 11 millimeters, a better lens than my 24 to 105 from Canon that cost me a thousand bucks. Also a battery, where each one can last about three hours. So with two batteries, I'm good to go for about six hours for a full day of shooting and it includes the AC adapter so you don't have to plug the camera into a wall outlet and worry about it. It will recharge the batteries while doing so. Oh, and the battery isn't on the bottom, so when the camera's mounted on a tripod or stabilizer, unlike a DSLR, you don't have to unmount the thing to swap the batteries. Oh, and you can record for hours and hours, not minutes. Next is this eye cup included that actually works with glasses, whereas this DSLR, well, it sucks. And that would be an additional purchase, and I've yet to find one that is good. You probably aren't lucky enough to have a camera with an articulating view screen, but if you do, like some of the Sony cameras, you'll be pissed as they don't flip out like this does. Rotation of 270 degrees, which is great when you're filming yourself or vlogging or capturing high or low shots. Or just flip it on its side like this so you can watch it while you're doing an interview or filming some event. Next, it's got built-in image stabilization that is way better than I've seen on many DSLR or mirrorless cameras. The microphone on the top of the camera is really good and you still want to invest a good mic which you can connect to this camera. The difference is camcorders have awesome audio electronics which means no external recorder needed, no syncing up separate sound files. The camera has two SD card slots, which can be set to bounce when one card is full to the other, where you can record simultaneously to both. Unlike a lot of cameras, this camcorder has a headphone jack for monitoring the audio. Hang in there as I'm just getting started. It has an HDMI out so you can record to an external recorder. Another false idea is white balance, as in you don't have any options, which is BS. I can set up my white balance however I want, including dialing in the exact K values for my shot. For reviewing footage, in case you don't have your headphones jacked in, it has a small speaker right here. Oh, and when you're shooting outside and the sun is killing your exposure, remember those extra purchase ND filters? No prob here, bro. It includes one quarter, one sixteenth, and one sixty-fourth ND filters built into the camera. Oh, did I mention it shoots in 4K with options for 1080 if you want to do that? 
Try and do this with your camera. You've got it all set up and all of a sudden you need to shoot something happening right the F now. Open screen, camera on, press record. Wait for it because the really good stuff is coming. Remember this cool eyepiece? Well, it yanks out and rotates and when it senses your eye on the eyepiece, it turns off the screen and displays everything with crystal clarity through its viewfinder. Take your eye off the viewfinder and it's instantly back to the flip out screen. There's more and I haven't even gotten to the amazing stuff yet. It includes histograms, peaking, zebras, gamma displays, you name it, it's got it. Oh yeah, for those wondering, it has built-in time code options when you want to sync up with a bunch of other cameras or audio devices. Wi-Fi? Yep. Camera control from your phone? Yep. Face tracking is amazing and dead spot on. Even when the person leaves the scene and comes back into it, and you can set the autofocus to be center pointed, flexible, or for a certain zone or wide. You could set the audio to input to recognize the built-in mic, which isn't shabby. The mic in out over here or a separate mic or use the hot shoe to power your mic. If you do nothing, the camera will just recognize what is plugged in. Not even close to the good part yet, almost there. You can set it for what they call S and Q mode, where you can set the frames per second all the way to one second, meaning you now have time lapse happening. Oh, but my DSLR takes photos. Whatever, so does the camcorder. Okay, I can't wait anymore. You can film at 240 frames per second slow-mo. No, it also does 480 frames per second slow-mo. No, man, you are so hard to please. This camera will shoot 960 frickin' frames per frickin' second. Now there's more, but my mouth is getting tired. So lastly, you get all this for 1800 bucks. Not impressed? Cool. The point is, do your research when buying a camera as there's a lot of options out there that can give you what you want without dipping in your pocket every time you realize what you got sucks. Don't discount camcorders. They've come a long way and I've included some more and less expensive ones in the description below. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.